What is the cutest thing on the world? Is it this funny little deer or this tiny duck? Is it this baby? No, babies are disgusting. Perhaps it could be this capybara taking a bath. Ah, yeah, maybe. <clears throat> Moving on. As a scientist who bases 100% of his research within the 2008 life simulation game Spore, I theorize that by creating the cutest creature possible, I might just be able to take over the world through adorableness alone. The question was, where did I start? Spore is such a complex game, and there was just too many options. But, upon searching through the default menus of Spore's creature creator, I think I found the perfect test subject. Cuter than a button, and as charming as can be, it was a beautiful little elephant. So the experiment was underway, and after spawning into the world with my elephants, who for some reason rose up out of the ocean, I went about setting up a base on land. If I was going to be as cute as possible, the first thing I needed to do was find some new cute body parts to add to this already adorable canvas. Ah, perfect. Here was a fossil straight away. Oh, I'm not too sure what that is, but maybe I could use it as some sort of tail? With this in mind, I began to head back to my nest, but hang on, there was something in the way. A small plum was holding onto my elephant's foot. I couldn't move. I tried shaking him off by doing a 360 maneuver, but even then, the plum would not give up, and it blocked me off at every twist and turn. Thankfully, the other elephants came to my rescue, and for now, the plum ran away. This meant it was time to get down to business. I entered the creature creator and deliberated about where to put this new body part I had found. Hmm, I'm not too sure about this. Maybe I should try a few other options instead, such as, uh, how about this mustache? But then I realized this was the worst idea I had ever had. Oh god, I've ruined it. Quick, someone shave it off. Oh god, does anyone have a shaver or, or a razor or any- Don't worry, because this video is sponsored by Manscaped. The festive season is approaching fast, and I'm willing to bet that you're still hairy, aren't you? <laughs> You are despicable. Me and the boys are all getting smooth for Christmas, so we can slip inside the post box and go and visit Santa Claus. But have no fear, because Manscaped is sponsoring this video, and they've got you covered with their brand new performance package. Thanks to the Lawn Mower 4, count them, 4.0 body hair trimmer, you too can be fresh as a cold winter's morn. Marvel at its indescribably advanced waterproofing technology and fine shaving ability that is guaranteed to leave you with less hair than you started off with. Don't think you heard me correctly? Well, that's probably because you haven't used the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. But for few wee, now that my nose is clear, I'm smelling something a little bit stinky. Quickly, apply copious amounts of Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. We can't have those crown jewels smelling foul now, can we? And with the Crop Reviver Ball Toner, your two little Brussels sprouts downstairs will be looking extra tasty this Christmas time. Not satisfied yet, did I mention that the performance package includes what some are claiming to be the most comfortable boxes in the world? I would know, I've got them on right now. Phew, feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. You can get 20% off plus free shipping right now if you use the promo code BOGBOY. That's the promo code BOGBOY at manscaped.com. Thank you once again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Now where was I? Ah yes, my experiment. Here we go, back to the video. <laughs> Through this horror show, I had come to the realization that this elephant was already perfect. And with that, it was about time to get started on the real adventure. <clears throat> uh, this, this is the part where I do the story. Stinky was the most adorable little elephant around. She was as cute as cute could be, although she would never say it herself as she was very humble and really modest and, and just a nice sort all round. Stinky had been having a very ordinary day. That is, until she had a rather peculiar run-in with a plum. The plum had seemed to want to get her attention for some reason, and being the inquisitive sort, Stinky decided to find out what all the commotion was about. She headed to the plum's nest, and they began to talk. 
The plums said that Stinky was the most beautiful creature they had ever seen. As plums, the rest of the world rather looked down upon them, and they were hoping they could acquire her talents in a rather ambitious mission. If such a charming elephant like herself could travel around with them as a sort of ambassador, the plums were sure that people would begin to see them in a more positive light. And maybe, eventually, they could even conquer the world by spreading love and peace and friendship and collusion and friendship. In return, the plums would... well, they hadn't quite figured that part out yet. But, not being very good at negotiating, Stinky immediately agreed, and a new alliance was formed. Together, the new plum promotional team headed out, and Stinky was looking forward to her first day in her new role as PR representative. The PR, of course, standing for plum reputation. It was her job to use her cuteness to bring the plums up the social hierarchy, and they began by heading around the neighborhood, coming first across a group of koi carp. The koi carp were more than happy to listen to Stinky's impassioned yet adorable speech. And, by the time she was finished, they would have given her a round of applause if only they had the arms to do so. Next, the team moved on to a group of bird-shaped creatures, who, like the carp, were equally won over by Stinky's charm and charisma. It was all going so well, until... Ooh, what the hell were these? The third creatures they bumped into were a much tougher crowd. They stood there grimacing. How was Stinky supposed to charm a creature that was so inherently uncharming? Maybe this task was going to be a bit harder than Stinky had first thought. Thankfully, just around the corner, help was at hand, in the form of a group of penguins. The leader of the penguins, Peter, told Stinky that he dreamed of becoming a pirate, and that he would trade information on how to be charming as long as she joined his pirate crew. Stinky was already part of the Plum promotional team. She did, however, have a friend who was interested in pirates, and she told Peter she would refer him via email address within 7 to 10 business days. Of course, Stinky didn't know what emails were, but she knew that that was something that a PR representative would probably say. This was good enough for Peter, and he proceeded to instruct her on a new charming technique. The key to being charming, according to Peter, was to do a funny little dance. In Peter's words, as long as Stinky, quote-unquote, shook her behind like it was full of salt and pepper, she was sure to win anyone over. That seems like good advice, thought Stinky, and she continued onwards with a spring in her step, ready to try out her new technique. She captivated a group of hedgehogs by performing an adorable salsa. Then, she charmed a group of trout by bobbing up and down whilst whistling a delightful tune. The plums couldn't believe their luck. To think they had managed to bag such a talented ambassador. But Stinky was beginning to have second thoughts. Things were all moving a bit too fast. She wanted to help the plums, sure. But what was this all for? To rule the world through cuteness? When she thought about it, Stinky didn't really want world dominance. She just wanted... Well, in truth, Stinky had always just wanted to be loved. Stinky explained this to the plums, whilst emphasizing heavily that she very much only thought of them in a professional capacity. Thankfully, the plums were very understanding, and in fact, this doubled up perfectly as a way for them to pay Stinky back. How about, whilst parading around spreading the good word about plum kind, they would also try to find Stinky a date? Stinky agreed, and the campaign continued full steam ahead. But around these parts, dating options were few and far between. How about these lobsters? No, too weird and spiky, and they didn't seem to like her much anyway. What about these toucans? They might be okay, but every time Stinky got near one of them, it flew away. What was going on? Stinky had no problem with charm when it came to public relations, but as soon as it came to finding love, everyone was avoiding her like the plague. It was upon finding a nest of micro-pigs that the issue became clear as day. Stinky was just too small. If these were micro-pigs, then that meant Stinky must be a micro-elephant. This wasn't good, as even Stinky knew that scientifically, taller people are more attractive. She decided to ask the micro-pigs for advice. As small creatures themselves, the pigs were very well versed on this subject. According to them, the only natural way to get taller in real life was to inhale a substance known as copium. 
but their advice was what she could try doing instead is to stand on top of something high up to make herself seem taller. This gave Stinky a genius idea. Okay, if she could just jump on top of here and then... Oh, oh no, that's not quite right. Oh god, stop moving. Stand still, stand still. Stinky's idea was for her and another elephant to stack themselves, so together they would have the presence of one big elephant. Stinky tried again, this time performing some spectacular front flips to try and lever herself on top of her friend. For a moment, it seemed as if it was working, but then her friend began to bounce up and down, and the whole thing was ruined. Well, that didn't go very well, and Stinky was feeling rather hopeless. Perhaps she was destined to be alone forever. She wandered around feeling dejected. So dejected, in fact, that she didn't even notice the huge geezer springing out of the ground in front of her. And, look out, Stinky! You're about to... Oh, you're about to... <gasps> she was launched high, high into the air. And, would you believe it, from way up in the clouds, she spotted him. The one. The very one she had been dreaming of. Upon hitting the ground with a thud, she rushed over, hoping and praying that what she had seen wasn't merely a figment of her imagination. But no, there he was, the most handsome little elephant she had ever seen. Small Paul. Their eyes met and Stinky felt her heart melt into her stomach. They were perfect for each other, really, truly perfect. Stinky thanked the Plums for all they had done for her, and bid them a fond farewell. It was time to go on her first ever date. The next few days were a dream. Her and Paul spent every waking hour frolicking in the fields, splashing about in the water, and firing themselves up into the air on the geyser near which they had first met. Stinky spent hours showing small Paul her front flipping skills and afterwards they would go and visit the giant toucan, just to annoy it and run away again in fits of laughter. Ah, it was such fun. Stinky thought she could spend her whole life at Small Paul's side. But then, off in the distance, uh-oh, who was this? P- p p p poachers Very suddenly, a bunch of armed men came charging out of the wilderness. The air was split by loud banging noises as they fired their shotguns without hesitation. Stinky and Small Paul ran as fast as their tiny legs would carry them, but the poachers were too many and too fast. Seeing how dangerous the situation was getting, Small Paul bravely turned around and went to face the poachers head on. It was a noble sacrifice and a testament to how valiant Small Paul really was. Before she knew it, Stinky was separated from him, and, in the chaos, they lost each other. Stinky too turned around and rushed in, but by this point, Paul was nowhere to be seen. She heard the rev of engines behind her, and some sort of cart pulled away, noises of struggle coming from inside. Paul! She cried out in desperation. Stinky was more determined than ever before. She would reach him, no matter what. They had just found each other. It was too soon for it all to go so wrong. And then, oof, a stray shotgun hit her on the back of the head. She was knocked unconscious and everything went dark. <laughs>